Cabot to Cartier, colonies and kings. Canada's history is as vast as our nation is large, and there are chapters of our country's past that are rarely opened and rarely acknowledged. Yet the Canada that we know today would not exist if not for the sacrifices and contributions of the Asian community. Confederation united colonies into a country, but the country was not physically united until 1885, when the final spike of the Canadian Pacific Railway was driven into the ground. 17,000 Chinese laborers, often tasked with the most dangerous jobs, worked and died under grueling, inhumane and discriminatory conditions, which leaders claimed was the only way the railroad could be built economically. It's estimated that for every mile of track laid, at least four Chinese workers died, the majority of whom remain nameless in Canadian history. Following the railroad's completion, Chinese immigration and labor was no longer in demand. In an effort to disincentivize Chinese immigrants from entering Canada, a head tax was implemented, starting at $50 and going as high as $500. Juan Kamyao was the first known person of Chinese descent to be born in Canada. Despite speaking multiple languages, including English, Chinook, Cantonese and Hakka, and practicing to be a lawyer, Juan faced considerable discrimination and was denied the chance to vote or take the bar exam. He still spent much of his life fighting for his community and was pivotal in overcoming racist policies, including the head tax. Asian Canadians were largely restricted from practicing law. It wouldn't be until 1945 when Q. Doc Yip became the first lawyer of Asian descent in Canada. Along with Juan, he was instrumental in fighting racist policies. He worked closely with activists, civil liberties and human rights lawyers to repeal the Chinese Immigration Act of 1923, over 20 years after its introduction in 1947. South Asians trying to find a new life in Canada also face discrimination by racist policies, even those willing to lay down their lives for a country that did not readily accept them. At a time when Canada accepted over 400,000 European immigrants, a figure still unsurpassed to this day, a racist policy born directly from anti-Asian sentiment barred legal landing for those coming from India. Bukhan Singh was one of only 10 Canadian Sikhs permitted to fight for their country in the First World War. His grave in Kitchener, Ontario is the only known military grave in Canada belonging to a Sikh soldier from the World Wars and now serves as a gathering site for an annual Sikh Remembrance Day ceremony. The son of a pacifist and activist, Raymond Moriyama decided he would become an architect while recovering from burns in a hospital bed. He was later interned during World War II, where his very first architecture project, a treehouse made from scrap lumber, gave him solace from the misery of internment. Moriyama's work includes the Toronto Reference Library, the Canadian War Museum, the Canadian Embassy in Tokyo, and Ottawa City Hall. In recent years, Canada has seen an influx in Syrian immigrants seeking safety amid conflict in their home, with many of them establishing new routes and finding success. One of Canada's oldest chains draws parallels over a century earlier. Syrian immigrant Ablan Leon left his native land to find success in Canada. He settled in Welland, Ontario, working door to door until he saved enough to purchase a modest building. This was the first Leon's. Ablan, understanding the struggle immigrants faced, extended credit to new Canadians who were unable to find financial support elsewhere, earning him loyalty amongst working class Canadians. Jean Lum was born into a heavily segregated British Columbia, living under more than 100 laws and policies specifically enacted against the Chinese people. Jean relocated to Toronto, where after marrying her Chinese-born husband of 50 years, she lost her Canadian citizenship. Her outspoken nature made her an unofficial spokesperson of the local Chinese community. She lobbied the federal government to change the discriminatory immigration laws that kept Chinese families separated. Jean's zeal also led her to head the Save Chinatown Committee, preventing further destruction of Toronto's first Chinatown. Some of Moses Neimer's earliest memories were fleeing the persecution of Nazi Germany while living under Soviet rule. But through his efforts, he would ultimately end up reshaping the broadcasting landscape of our country while leaving an undeniable mark on Canadian culture. Snymer founded City TV, which also led to stations including Much Music, Bravo, Space and more. It is easy to remain detached from the horrific realities of war, but for many around the world, it's not a luxury they've been afforded. Kim Fook unknowingly became the face of the innocent victims of conflict. Thanks to a Pulitzer Prize winning photograph of her fleeing a napalm attack during the Vietnam War, 
a photo which President Nixon once cast doubt on. Her physical and emotional ordeal led her to become a lifetime activist for peace, providing medical and psychological aid to child victims of war. The first woman of Asian ancestry to be appointed to Canada's Senate is also the same person responsible for this month-long celebration of the history, culture and contributions from those of Asian descent. Senator Vivian Poi's political career is defined by championing diversity, equality and representation, and the many awards to her name represent the gratitude of communities her work has directly benefited. From all of us here at Global News, we hope this Asian Heritage Month has given you a chance to reflect and to learn more about the many Canadians of Asian descent who have helped shape our country and culture. We hope this leads to a recognition that continues well beyond the month of May for a celebration all year round.